In order to celebrate the release of the rather excellent Mulan, Walt Disney paired up with McDonald's to create the unexpected hit of 1998. No, it wasn't Ghetto Superstar featuring White Left Jean and Praz Michelle. It was, of course, Citroen Sauce. And again in 2017, 19 years later, McDonald's rocked the world with a surprise re-release of its spicy debutante. Now they have come of university age. Some mad for it, China-based sauce lovers got their mitten slap on some eBay hot sauce samples, with some folks paying up to $90,000. Yes, that's the equivalent of a villa, eh, a shed in London. Now, Ronald McDonald might have had the world's knickers in a twist for a hot moment, but one grandma in China has had everyone salivating for the past 20 years. She's a single mum and has never been to school. When she was 50, she was persuaded to brand her special recipe, Lao Gamma, which is English for the godmother. Today, she's worth 7.5 billion yuan. That's a cheeky billion US dollars for hot sauce. Oh, that smells good. All right. It's only spice, isn't it? No, look, it's got little black beans in there too. Ooh. Let's try it. I'm really curious. All right. I mean, this is not how Chinese people would eat it. Well, this seems like um, a crossing of cultures. Um, it does seem like a little bit of a bastardiz mm -hmm. bastardization, doesn't it? All right. Well, cheers. Bottoms up. Chin chin. Yeah, I like them. Mm. It's not very spicy. No, it's nice. It's quite good, actually. Mm -hmm. I like one behave. <laughs> oh, yeah. Lao Gamma, if you're watching, we know that you're retired right now, but feel free to pop an envelope in the post. Yeah, just filled with this, preferably in a jar. No, I'm talking about cash. <laughs> oh, no, I prefer this. Okay. All right, that's enough oil for us for now. All right. Mm-hmm. Here we are. <laughs> These days in China, spice is growing ever more popular. It's really in vogue and so fashionable, in fact, well, Here's a bunch of highly popular snacks as seen online. Ooh. Ooh. These are spicy strips. Indeed. Mm. Now, most folks who grew up in China will remember these little fellas in much the way that the Colonel or those golden arches will provoke a similar sense of nostalgia in many of us. Except that the spicy strips are quite a bit cheaper at just over 35 cents for a bag. Mm. A price which hasn't really changed at all in the last 20 years. So what do they taste like? Well, they're kind of juicy. Mm. Mm. <laughs> you bite into them. They, uh, they kind of taste like meat when in fact they're made of soybeans. Mm -hmm which is really a tribute to the almost Jedi-esque cloaking powers of spice, right? If you say so. <laughs> <laughs> Here's another special snack, mm. one that I don't think most of you can really get to grips with. It's chicken claws. Most of the world eats chicken, but only as long as it doesn't resemble any part of the chicken that they are familiar with. In China, however, they don't like to waste a single nugget. In fact, for any healthy Chinese person, it's safe to say that there's very little link between the shape of the body part and how good it can taste. Oh. I think he's broken that one. It's quite it's rubbery. It's okay. Well. I'll try this tiny little bit. Well, Are you going to try one? I've already tried them. Ooh. Well, it is spicy, but it's also quite rubbery. Oh, these are spice ladies. <laughs> There is, however, an even more popular food in China, not something that satisfies your average Chinese Joe much more than the pot that gets hot. So popular, in fact, that it led to the rise of the eponymous self-heating hot pot. This what? pot is self-heating, yeah. No flames, no prep, just peel back and pour. This, our friends, is high-tech snacknology. Is it safe to say that if you are a recently deceased foodie, then your heaven is probably China-shaped? Mm, indeed. So I don't know if you can hear this, but there's a bubbling sound coming from it. I think we should just move this incendiary device over here. Okay. we will be ready in a moment. Fantastic. But why? Why do Chinese folks seem to love spice? And the more they love it, 
the more they want it. Perhaps the answer lies in the fact that spicy dishes and snacks all originate from mountainous regions, the most humid areas of China, where after a day of moving around in the sticky heat all day, a bucket or two of spice can invigorate and restore fortitude. In other parts of China, also where the weather is much cooler, it's sure to pop open those stiff pores. Ew! So I guess spice is the Chinaman's vodka. Truly. Traditionally, it was a regional delicacy, if you can kind of call this kind of heat delicate. But after China opened up in the late 70s and migrant workers crossed the country seeking fortune, well, they took the spice with them. Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, these rich coastal cities attracted a tidal wave of spice double labor. As time passed, of course, these dishes merged with the local dishes of these areas, and new fusions began to appear on the market. These were then taken back to the hometowns of the migrant workers to boot. Even China's resident foreign fast food giants were thrown in their lot with the spice. Let's bring back the hot pot. Yes! Oh my god, I'm so excited. <gasps> now I've been to Chongqing a few times. So Ooh. this is going to be interesting to see how this compares. This is fan sir, this is like an egg noodle. Not fans, but egg noodle. Mmm. Thank you for watching Open China. I'm David. I'm Morag. Remember to check out our Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that stuff. Smash the like, smash the subscribe. But above all else, remember. Keep it open. Keep it open. Oh, I'm going to tuck into the rest of this. <laughs> Wild mm. horses. It's pretty spicy.